I knew I, what I was going to do with my life by the time I was three years old. And it's the craziest story, and I repeat it to every journalist who's ever interviewed me. And there's lots of articles written on me from everything from the small newspapers to the New York Times. It's the same story. It's completely true. When I was three years old, I lived in Mexico. I lived in Guadalajara. And my father was a professor there at the University of Guadalajara. And he took me to go see these murals by the Mexican uh, muralist. His name was Jose Clemente Orozco. He took me to go see this particular mural called El Hombre de Fuego. He lifted me up to look at that mural. And at age three, I looked at that mural. I knew exactly what I wanted to do with my life. Exactly. And I was three years old. I knew what I wanted. I just had to do. I had to become an artist with some political bent. And I had to work towards social justice. I even understood that at age three. Well, my name is Diego Marcial Rios. Uh, I do a number of things for my living. God has blessed me with many talents. I have a, a number of different job set skills. I'm currently a full-time employment specialist for Catholic Charities Incorporated of San Francisco. I've worked there for about 13 to 14 years. Uh, in that job, I work with the uh, very difficult to place uh, clients and uh, people who are displaced, currently displaced workers. And on top of that, uh, I'm also a professional artist. I show both nationally and internationally and have for almost 30 years. And I also, on top of that, I illustrate books. On top of that, I teach. And on top of that, I give uh, public demonstrations and that sort of stuff. So I'm a very busy boy. That's sort of what I do. My style of art, according to many critics, I mean, I'm not a art critic, nor do I want to be, nor do I want to be an art historian. But according to what I read, it falls into surrealism to expressionism. And so it's contemporary Mexican-American expressionism, surrealism, or something like that. Labels don't mean a whole lot to me, but uh, the world will give you labels anyway. That's, that's what I sort of get labeled as. Sometimes I get labeled as a political artist because of my, uh, a lot of my work, particularly my, particular my woodcuts, are very political in nature. You want to get into more or less consistent, pretty consistent amount. Sometimes it takes me a long time to do, sometimes it takes me a short time to do. Because like, I picked it up right now. The, the goal is here that he's just trying to put an even yeah. layer of ink over the whole thing. Pretty so much. That it's consistent over the whole entire Right, pretty thing. much. I want you all to look at all the ink that's been blown up. Don't put your hands on it. Up. And you're next. Come on. My parents were politically active from the get-go, from the early 1960s and 1950s to the time my, my, my grandparents were also politically active. In fact, my grandparents were uh, the original political active. They were people who out and fought, lit literally fought with guns to protect their land and literally fought with guns to protect the uh, their livelihood as a uh, lower middle class, uh, you know, migrant workers or lower middle class farmers in Mexico. So my, par my, my parents, of course, they were politically active, highly politically active in the 60s, the anti-war movement. They also worked with Cecil Chavez as well as I did. If you look at the piece, it has the, there's an angel which is lifting above a destroyed nuclear weapon, and towards the angel's feet, or on one side is a dictator, on the other side a fighter pilot. And the angel looks like it's, it's looking for something else to do. And the name of the piece is Until You Come. What would you say sets yourself apart um, from other artists? Well, a number of them. My very strong subject matter, number one. And two, again, my, social, my, my work towards social justice itself outside of the artwork. So, one, a lot of artists don't like to touch on really strong subject matter. They don't. If you look at 99% of the artwork, even it's even in museums and stuff like that, a lot of these allegedly good artists or great artists, they're not touching upon work which is really tough or strong. They're not. You know why? Because they're weenies. Now, but then again, that's my perspective towards it. Another thing that sets me completely apart is that I, again, work towards social change. I not only, I not only bitch about it, say, you know what? I wish these and these problems would, got, would get solved. I get off my ass every morning. I told the New York Times the same thing. Every morning at 5.30, I go face 300 clients and try to fight for social justice. That's a huge problem. And that's a huge difference. Most artists, not that they don't have those capabilities. I think they do have the capabilities. They're just, they're just not willing to get off their ass and change something. You know. <laughs>